we're gonna be building a gaming slash streaming PC today. And while it will be a bit of a budget PC, it won't be a bare bones PC, meaning uh, you're not gonna be limited to a pixelated stream or not be able to handle animated alerts. You'll be able to run a top tier stream that looks just as good as mine does and it will be upgradable for long-term use. Let's do this. Before we get started, I'd like to mention today's sponsor, Owned.TV. If you're looking to put together a budget stream that still looks professional and beautiful, Owned.TV is probably where you want to go. Not only do they have entire stream design solutions like alerts, transitions, panels, even banners, but they are 60% off when you use code alpha at checkout. That's a special holiday sale, by the way. Each theme has a modular and customizable design, so your stream still looks unique even if dozens of people pick the same theme pack that you do like, for example, the glitch one here that I'm a fan of. So go upgrade your stream, start looking professional. Like many of the community have done. Uh, pick one up at the link down below and make sure you use code alpha at checkout to save 60% on your purchase and, uh, and support the channel. Cool. Now let's address something important here. There are uh, slight but significant differences between a PC built for gaming and one that's designed for gaming and streaming. One CPU that might be a powerhouse for gaming might immediately start to struggle when you fire up OBS. So that cup that you saw in the very beginning that I'm sure like you're all like, what, what, what is, what the, why are you putting a cup on the screen? Uh, yeah, that's important. We're gonna get into that. That's what that whole thing's gonna be for. I'm gonna explain this uh, like a third grade teacher. <laughs> Hope you're okay with that. <laughs> so let's jump right into the build. Our first core component is the GTX 1660. It is the most expensive part of this build with an MSRP of 229. It's one of the cheapest GPUs on the market that's built with Nvidia's Turing architecture. So not only can it pump out frames when you're gaming, but it can also encode your stream at a quality that rivals X264 medium in most cases. Let's move on to CPU. We're going with the Ryzen 5 2600. Ryzen's are not only an incredible value when it comes to multi-core processing, uh, something heavily utilized by OBS, but but they're also just an incredible value when it comes to price per performance. And going with the CPU that's one generation old drops the price down from $190 to $120. That's a $70 difference. And as you can see from the last video we posted, we weren't even close to maxing out the 3600. The motherboard was an interesting one. I decided to go with a Micro ATX B450 motherboard. Going with Micro ATX seemed to be the best balance between saving some money while also having an extra PCIe slot for uh, expandability in the future if you want to add multiple cameras. And a capture card in there. And there didn't really seem to be any reason to go with like X470 or X570 since we're not using SLI and we're definitely not gonna need PCIe 4.0. Motherboard seems to be the place that most people tend to cheap out on. And since we're kind of gonna be pushing this PC to the max by both gaming and streaming simultaneously, I wanted to find one that seemed to have a solid heat sink for its VRMs. And probably most importantly, if you ever wanted to upgrade to a third gen Ryzen processor, all you have to do is a BIOS upgrade, you should be good to go. All right, let's fly through the rest of the components. We're going with a 500 gigabyte Samsung SSD, 16 gigabyte of 3000 megahertz RAM, getting those higher RAM speeds for our Ryzen processor. You could save a little bit on RAM. I definitely uh, probably spent 20 bucks more than I had to to get a more notable memory brand. I just wanna make sure if I ever recommend cheaper RAM to you guys that I've I've had the chance to test them beforehand. Plus RGB is a nice touch. We got a 500 watt PSU from EVGA that's 80 plus certified. I think it's time we put this together in style. What's the difference between GPU and RAM? I've never GPU'd my dick. Now there is something I'd like to address in this video because there are a lot of amazing channels that do PC builds and there are a lot of incredible gaming PC build videos out there. However, lots of times what'll happen is someone will build a gaming PC and then in order to get extra clicks on that video, they'll add streaming into the title when it's just not a PC built for streaming. Fortunately, these videos are filled with red flags, red flags that you uh, as a streamer should probably be aware of. Let's talk about them. Because when you're building a budget PC, what you're really trying to accomplish is squeezing every bit of performance out of your components as possible, avoiding paying for extra headroom that doesn't get utilized. Let's switch these. This is gonna make life easier. You pick a GPU and a CPU, you fire up a game, and you start using up the components. Maybe a little bit more. Gaming uses a lot of GPU, right? Now, when you're picking a gaming CPU, Intel, we'll add about three to 5% of performance 
over AMD. And that just comes from its strength in single core processing. But when you fire up OBS and your PC starts compiling and rendering dozens of images together, such as cameras, alerts, overlays, transitions, animations, all those different things, you're gonna get a solid 30 to 50% more power out of a Ryzen processor. And this is why in PCs about gaming slash streaming PC builds, uh, an Intel CPU is your first red flag. So we've got our gaming taking up our components. Now we're including rendering. All right, now that we've taken care of our gaming and our rendering, the last process on our PC is encoding. And this is when it takes our final rendered image, it shrinks it down to a smaller size, and it sends it off to uh, Twitch or, I don't know, DLive. Whatever happened to DLive? Your, your end destination for your content. Now, if you encode with X264, you're squeezing this final process into the remainder of your CPU power, which, you know, and I'm not, you know, this is this is where I build my PCs. I'm not gonna do that. And if you wanna make sure that you have enough headroom left over here for a high quality encoding at uh, the encoding speed of X264 medium, which is kind of the standard set on streaming, uh, you're gonna need a pretty powerful CPU. In fact, I probably wouldn't recommend anything less than a Ryzen 7, and a lot of people wouldn't recommend any less than a Ryzen 9. Well, there'll be videos on that in the future on what CPU you really need for rendering X264 on the gaming PC. But either way, if you wanna game and encode code on the same CPU, uh, your CPU is gonna have to take about a $200 to $300 price increase. Fortunately, in the name of efficiency, we have one more cup. See, your GPU over here actually has a dedicated encoder chip hanging out over here, just waiting to be used. And if you're not encoding, you're not using it, essentially giving you a ton of headroom that you're wasting on a budget PC. And before we get any further, it's important you know that both NVIDIA and AMD GPUs have an encoder chip. You've probably heard of NVIDIA's, it's called NVENC. So by offloading your encoding onto this tiny little chip over here, essentially you are freeing up space. Do you like the visual? I always thought I could be a teacher in another life. And you can use that extra space for things like extra stream elements and animations or extra frames in your game. The point I'm trying to make here is if you're watching a single PC build video for gaming and streaming and they mention to encode with X264, that's red flag number two. Also, along with what I mentioned before, AMD GPUs do have an encoder built in. Unfortunately, uh, the encoder quality is kind of trash. If we were to line up the encoder quality over here, just to make a comparison, NVENC is gonna be right up there with X264 medium, maybe slightly underneath it in most cases. Uh, the AMD encoder is gonna be down there below very fast, just above super fast. Essentially saying that as of right now, in late 2019, early 2020, uh, if you're streaming and coding with an AMD GPU, your viewers are gonna have a bad time. Bringing us to red flag number three, uh, any video encouraging you to buy an AMD GPU on a budget streaming build. They're great GPUs, great for gaming, not for a budget streaming build. Generally, these videos with red flags in them come from YouTubers who are exceptional PC builders. Uh, they're just usually not streamers. And you can tell this because when they show off their stream footage for just a quality showcase, it's usually just gameplay footage with no camera, no overlays, no alerts, none of the things that streamers are going to use that are gonna add to the, uh, the load of the CPU. And these are just things that if you don't consistently stream, you just don't think about. So the final red flag for any gaming streaming PC build is check and see if the builder is actually a streamer. Because if they're not, they're just gonna miss some things. But let's fire up this PC and test it out. All right, PC has been built, it's up and running, we've got games installed, we've got OBS running. Uh, what I'd like to do is push this through a real world streaming test, and not just like a little stream test, I wanna throw it through the gauntlet. So essentially what we're doing is we're gonna throw everything at it. We're capturing with display capture, we've got a webcam going, we've got an animated overlay, we've got a second scene here with a fully animated background, multiple browser sources, I mean you can just See down here, we got a, a, a ton of sources layered over, a bunch of them are animations. We've also got an animated transition, we've got sub alerts thrown in there, so basically everything's ready to go. So what we're gonna do here, just to show exactly what your stream will look like if you build this PC, is we're gonna fire up some games, and while we're in the game, we're gonna launch an alert and throw on the stinger transition, which is gonna cause us to basically render two scenes at the same time, as well as an animation connecting the two. Uh, kind of pushing this to its maximum points. We're gonna see what happens to the frames on the stream. We're gonna see what happens to the frames in game, just to see, worst case scenario, 
How does this PC handle? So let's start by firing up some Apex, kind of the notorious stream killer game out there for single PC setups. Now, just like the last video, I'm not super concerned about the frames we dropped. So just making a mental note, when we launched the game, shut down the game, launched it again, uh, we're at 149 drop render frames and 80 dropped encoding frames. Uh, not concerned about those. We shouldn't drop another single frame throughout the entire game. So. I'm remembering those numbers. And we're gonna be running the gameplay in 1080p, which is kind of what you should expect gaming and streaming with the 1660. Imagine just winning this game, so Sam has to go through like an extra 30 minutes of footage just, just because that's how long the game lasted. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. So the worst place to see frames in this game is obviously when we're looking at the entire world, so we're rendering the whole map. Got down to 50 frames. Those will come up as we land. We're gonna die quick here. All right, while we're in game, let's fire these off. Just launch the transition. Get out of here, kid! We didn't even drop below 70 frames! All right, how are we doing on frames? Just looking back on the game, there's when we dropped. Started at 50. During the game, our lowest like frame was 60. We usually hung out in the 80s. All right, so Apex is great, usually chilling in the 80s, sometimes dropping to the low 70s. See, and this is exactly why we're streaming with NVENC instead of X264. With streaming with NVENC and dumping that entire encoding load onto our GPU, we free up so much headroom on our CPU that allows us to not only buy a cheaper CPU, but also when we add a ton of animations, like a transition and an alert, you have that headroom available and it renders without dropping any frames in game and without dropping any frames in OBS. By the way, fun fact, this webcam I'm using was like 40 bucks. It's like this weird cheap Chinese thing. I'm testing it out, we'll see. If I like it, I'll let you know. So far, I do. All right, see how PUBG's fantastic netcode holds up here. <laughs> All right, we're gonna play a one-man squad just, just so I die fast. Got a really great test of frames there. Yeah, maybe we do solos and not solo squads. I think that was the wrong play. In fact, this pre-game lobby should be just fine. So while we're here in this lobby, let's fire this off, fire this off. You can see our average time to render did jump up to 3.1 milliseconds. However, if we're streaming at 60 frames per second, if we do the math, that means there are 16.66 milliseconds in every single frame. Well within the curve of being able to render without dropping a frame. You can see I'm hanging out with all these people. I'm hitting between 70 and 80 frames. Let's see if that changes right on the drop. I'm not gonna use these situations where it's rendering the whole map, but running around in game, rendering the game, hitting both a transition and dropping an alert, didn't drop a frame. Why do the settings disappear when you change PCs? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Frames were great. At the lowest, we hit 66 frames. Yeah, when we fired off that alert, we hit about 65. Okay. Blue hole, when I load in on another PC, don't reset my settings. <laughs> this, what year is it? Last game. Let's fire up Fortnite. We have to. Man, I haven't fired up this game in like a year and a half, so. Let's not use a lot of gameplay footage here. I don't even know what my build buttons are. That's okay, we're not gonna build. What are these question marks? What is this game? <laughs> Do you like not, you discover places? What is, let's just see how many frames we get and get out. Although I heard that like all these guys are bots now, right? Is that true? Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure that was a bot and he still got me. <laughs> see, PUBG. Like, as much as I dislike Fortnite, like, take notes. You could just click a ready up button right from the end of the, like, do you realize how little I have to wait for another match? Dang it. All right, so average 70 to 85 frames. And I think that crazy moment dropped us about 60 frames total in uh, on our stream. All right, I think we're done testing games. We on all of them averaged about anywhere from the worst at like 65 to the best at about 85. And then we occasionally did drop frames when we dropped the transition and the alert at the exact same time. So keep in mind, this is a worst case scenario. Also, we're using an animated overlay. You wanna beef up those numbers? 
use a static overlay. We're also using display capture. You wanna get some more frames, use game capture. The point we're trying to prove, and I think we did a pretty good job here, is on a budget level for a gaming and streaming PC, you can get a solid 1080p high quality stream, 60 frames per second, and game in 1080p 60 frames per second without any loss in quality or encoder speed or any of the things that make the viewing not fun for the viewer. The build came to a total of $660 plus. Uh, I would not recommend this case. I bought it, it was the cheapest case and it had a giant mesh front so I figured we'd get some really good airflow in there, it made a lot of sense. Uh, that was a nightmare. Not only was there one teeny tiny little hole for all your cables to come through to connect to the motherboard, uh, which is by the way right next to the fan, so I've got some cables almost being touched by fan blades. Some of the holes didn't line up properly. Like it was just a really weird cheap case. And you know, uh, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're going mini ITX. It, it, some extra holes pop up and it's not as bad with mini ITX. But um, I found another one for you. It's an extra 20 bucks. It's got a nice glass side. The front is all mesh again for better airflow. I, I looked at some reviews on it. I think this is gonna be a better experience. Just pay an extra 20 bucks get this case right here. Also, I spent a little too much on the RAM as well as the power supply. I went with a G-Skill just to go with one that was a name that I'd seen a little bit and I paid $70. Um, this one's got five a five star review or five egg review, if that's what you wanna call it, a new egg. Same speed, same capacity RAM, uh, $15 cheaper. Plus this PSU is also, it's got good reviews and uh, also $15 cheaper. So all in all, you can get this exact build for $650, stream in 1080p, solid quality, 60 frames per second with animated overlays, alerts, and still game in more than 1080p, 60 frames per second. I don't wanna to get too ahead of myself here. Don't wanna go nuts or anything, but combining a, a solid strategic set of components, as well as properly setting up our OBS, doing things like running OBS in admin mode so that uh, it prioritizes the frames on your stream, doing things like uh, using NVENC new and finding a low cost GPU that has uh, the Turing encoder so that NVENC looks just as good as X264. Little things like that, uh, making your machine as efficient as possible, can turn a budget build into an incredible streaming PC. And by golly, I think we've done it today. Of course, links to everything down in the description below. Uh, I hope this video helped. I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so if you have any questions for me, feel free, hit me up in there. Also, we have an amazing community of like 35,000 members in our Discord. If you wanna find some people who have done builds, you have questions, feel free to jump in there, make some friends, find some teammates. And as always, happy streaming. The very best, like no one ever was. To catch them is my real test, to train them is my cause.